What's good, y'all? Sheboygan, Killalicious, back for the video. Actually, back for another movie review, man. I really liked this one, man. This was a good change of pace. Finally, something good. There's a fucking spider on my wall. I literally look up and I see a spider. I'm gonna kill it right after this review is over. Don't worry, I'm gonna make sure I kill it. I'm gonna let y'all niggas, niggas in the core know that's dead. We also got back from C Transformers 1, and man, this movie was really, really, really good. I didn't expect it to be that good. Uh, I'm gonna give y'all a history with my, my history with Transformers. I grew up watching the Bayformers films. I like the first one. I hate the second one. The third one is okay. Four and five is complete hot, wet garbage. It's literally garbage juice. It's trash. Complete horrendous filth. The Age of Extinction, the last night was. I didn't see Bumblebee, still have it. And Rise of the Beast was mid at best. I wasn't a big fan of Rise of the Beast, but I love Transformers Prime. I swear that spider just fucking moved. I need to get this goddamn review over with. Before he descends, it starts to attack me, okay? This movie is fantastic. Go see it before I start reviewing it. Go see this movie. This movie is fucking incredible. If you're a Transformers fan, if you see me looking up there because of that damn spider, if you're a Transformers fan, go see it. If you are just want to go see a decent movie and don't really care about Transformers, I also advise that you go see it. This film might be the best Transformers film. Now listen, I know there's fans of the 80s Transformers film. That movie is fantastic. It's great. It's amazing. And even the first Transformers film is pretty decent. I heard Bumblebee is pretty good. But this takes the story, like the origin story of Optimus Prime and Megatron. And it really expands on it to where you understand why Megatron went down the road he went and why Prime became the legend we all know. Because for the majority of the movie, they're Orion Pax in D16, as you see right here. They don't. They start the film all without their uh, transformation cogs. They don't have them. They're just regular robots. Then they get their transformation cogs, and that's what starts their evolution into the characters we all know and love. Let's go over the characters, man. I want to say Bumblebee was a little annoying. Slight nitpick, he has like this weird joke, I'm Badassatron. Like he says that like a f too much during the film. Near the end, it kind of grew on me, I won't hold you. So it went from like a negative to a nitpick. It went from like, okay, I don't like this to, okay, it's growing on me, I see it. Alita 1 was great, I do think that she was a little bit cocky. <laughs> Just a bit, but she mellows out near the end and she becomes the Alita 1 we all know and love. At, at first she was an asshole, to Orion and D16, but over time, the more she spends time with them, the more she reminds you of the old sweet Alita one of old. And I have to say, what's his name? Brian something, Henry, or whatever the fuck the Negro's name is. He does a great job as D16, man. Like you, it's like, you know what's going to happen with these characters. You know where Orion Pax and D16 are going to end up. They're going to become mortal enemies. And they really make you feel the bond between them. You know, because they're miners in Cybertron. They're like a lower level upon like the Cybertronian hierarchy. All they do is mine Energon to give it to Sentinel Prime. Where Sentinel Prime does some interesting things with it now after dark of the moon i've always hated sentinel prime that movie has just left a bad taste in my mouth when it comes to sentinel fuck sentinel <laughs> i'm trying not to really spoil this movie it's not really spoilable because we all know the story the animation is incredible i'm gonna get to chris hemsworth as prime in a minute animation was fucking incredible man the trailers don't do this movie justice. It really doesn't. It really makes you think that this is some type of Nick Jr. bullshit. You know, that's what I thought going into this. I'm like, okay, this looks like a fucking joke. What is this? This isn't Transformers. It's like they took Prime, Transformers Prime's animation and just made it kiddified. No, 
the spider moon in. All right, I gotta get this review over with as fast as possible. If this is like a 10 minute review, you know why, because that motherfucker is moving. I'm gonna go grab my boom and exterminate your stupid ass. I can't wait to kill you. Anyways, back to the review. Chris Hemsworth as Orion Pax took me a while to get used to. He does a really good job with the innocent, courageous, brave, and optimistic young Prime. He really, at first, I was like, okay, all I hear is Thor with an English accent. But over time, near the end of the movie, I heard Optimus Prime. Especially when he becomes Optimus Prime, his voice changes and it kind of sounds like Coolins. Together as one. I think the cast did an incredible job. Chris Hendry, Chris Hendry, <laughs> Chris Hemsworth, and Brian something, Hen Tyler Henry, where the hell his name is. Great Optimus Prime and Megatron. And to be honest with you, I can't wait to see where they take these characters next. The world building, like, they introduce something new into, to me, like the Quintessence, because I always thought that the Quintessence are the creators of all Cybertronians. They are, but they play a different role in this movie that I wasn't expecting, and I liked it. There is a big twist in the movie that I didn't see coming, that I really liked. It's kind of obvious there's a certain Autobot in the movie. Well, not really an Autobot yet, because they don't exist yet at this point in time. It's like, oh, I'm such a nice person. I'm a good person. Woom, woom. And it's revealed that, no, he's a piece of shit. And he is literally betraying his own race because he's selfish and wants power. That's pretty much what the main... The, like, the villain of this movie isn't the villain that's really shown. Because through the main supposed villain, Megatron is born. I want to get into that. The evolution from D16 to Megatron is great. I do feel like we could have told this story throughout the course of maybe two films. Like maybe towards the end of this film, he's in like halfway through his evolution into Megatron. He's not all the way there yet. And in the next movie, boom, he get full on Megatron. And maybe in the third final movie in the trilogy, we get what we all wanted. War for Cybertron, Fall of Cybertron. This is the perfect movie for someone who doesn't hasn't seen Transformers before, or maybe didn't care about it before and wants to get into it now. This is the perfect fucking movie for you to watch. It is lit like this literally told the story of Prime and Megatron's origins perfectly. Perfectly. If I could nitpick some things, I would say B is slightly annoying. Uh, <laughs> uh, that's it. I really can't criticize this movie. It's literally just nitpicks. This film is the shit. The voice acting is fantastic. The storytelling, even though you know what's going to happen, you really wish that Prime and Megatron are friends because you really feel their bond and they're so likable together. They have great scenes together. Prime is optimistic. Megatron wants to stay between the confines of, you know, the Cybertronian hierarchy. But Orion Pax is like, no, we're more than this. You know, we're Cybertronian. We have a greater purpose than this. Like the whole movie is about them trying to find their purpose. What is and who is Orion Pax and D16? And by the end of the movie, they pretty much figured it the fuck out. Uh, again, the animation was stupid. Stunning, man. The action scenes, like everything in this movie served a purpose. The action scenes weren't this, weren't just fucking stupid, random, loud uh, explosions. It wasn't a Michael Bay jerk off fest. The action wasn't there for Michael Bay to whack off the fucking over budgeted goddamn dynamite set. Okay. No, the action is there to serve a purpose with the story. And I have to say, the ending of the movie is very optimistic, considering what happens next <laughs> between Prime and Megatron and the fate of Cybertron. I'm like, yeah, they really ended up this movie off on a high note, huh? Considering what happens next, because I'm like, yeah, Cybertron ain't going to make it towards the end of this supposed trilogy. And I hope they do do a trilogy. I hope they do. I hope the second movie 
is of Megatron and Optimus Prime going to war over Cybertron. And maybe the third and final movie is Prime and Megatron bringing their war to Earth and concluding it there. I do not want to see this crossed over with any of the live action stuff. Keep it as its own universe, please. I don't want it to be revealed that this is a prequel to the Rise of the Beasts reboot timeline. No, let this be its own thing in its own universe. When I tell you the quality of this film from the writing to the voice acting, you can feel the, the love and passion from this movie. You can tell this movie was made by Transformers fans. And listen, with the music, there was points in this movie where I heard Transformers Prime OST. I grew up watching Transformers Prime, it's my favorite Transformers show. I swear I heard Transformers Prime like OST. I'm like, wait a minute, I heard this before. I look on my online, it's Brian Tyler. The same dude who composed Prime composed this movie. This movie is damn near perfect on every fucking level. It is incredible. I low-key want to go see it again. Like, this movie and Deadpool and Wolverine are, is carrying 2024. And I haven't even watched Godzilla and Kong yet, The New Empire. I still need to watch that. And we still got Sonic 3 later this year. Holy shit. Transformers 1 is getting a 9 out of 10. This is a great movie. Take your kids to see it. Take your families to see it. A lot of twists and turns. Some things happen in this movie that you don't expect. And it all ends up where you know it's going to end up, right? Seeing Prime and Megatron's relationship just fall apart is heartbreaking. It really is. Still think we could have extended Megatron's descent into villainy just a bit more. But, and I like the way he gets the Decepticon insignia and how things are formed to be where we all know where these characters end up. It's great. Go see this shit. It's amazing. Sick of channel, link in the description. Wall my Twitch, let's do 30 likes. As a matter of fact, let's do 40 likes. Pretty sure I can manage that. I'm gonna see y'all next time. This movie is fucking incredible, man. I love this movie, man. Damn, it feels good to see something that I like for once instead of just constantly reviewing garbage. Outro, hit it. <laughs>